Okay, welcome back to the show, everybody. Very excited to sit down with my guest today, Julia Balaz. And we are sitting here under the sun in Gemini and the moon in Scorpio, at least where I am now. Um, feels very fitting for, for the conversation we're, we're going to have. And uh, very excited to have you here, Julia. Thank you for coming and having a conversation with me. Thank you, Emily. Such an honor to be invited as a guest on your show. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Something that I've been getting into the habit of asking my guests when I have them on the show, especially considering the conversation that we're going to have is, um, what is your astrological sun moon rising, if you feel comfortable sharing, as well as any other pertinent alignments that you have galactic astrology wise? Sure. Uh, my rising sign is Taurus and it's 29 degrees. So just five minutes later and I would have been Gemini. I feel like I have a strong uh, Gemini um, energy too with my moon in Gemini. So Taurus rising, moon in Gemini and sun in Aries. So I have that quadrant covered. And right now I have Jupiter sun conjunct my ascendant. So the energy is still activating. I feel I can do so much. I have so many ideas coming through. So I'm, I'm really excited about the times. Everything just feels good. And the sun is shining. So <laughs> it's Beautiful all good. Day. Amazing. I also share a moon in Gemini. Um, we, we share that. Very good. I felt that from you. I feel that in your work. I feel that I feel that the Gemini energy. Um, do you have that in other places in your in your chart as well? My north node is in Gemini too. Okay. And again, at 29 degrees. So okay. I, I feel um, the strong Sagittarian frequency from my south node. And it is my uh, signature sign like that frequency is really strong in my chart. Also, my Jupiter and Uranus are in Sagittarius. Um, and I feel also from some recollection of my previous incarnations, whether through regression hypnosis or just through deep meditations or dreams that I've had such a strong Sagittarian focus, uh, really seeking uh, and gathering knowledge and information that I feel in this incarnation, I really am called to bring it into nibble sizes, understandable in lay layman language and just finding a way to bring it down to earth and to you know, and share it with humanity. So I feel aligned with what I'm doing here. That's beautiful. I, I definitely relate to that. I have a lot of Sagittarian Gemini. energy as well. Yeah. And Gemini. Beautiful. So I relate to you. Yeah. Amazing. Well, let's begin. I would love to hear uh, Julia. I, of course, I've heard your, your origin story. Um, but I'll never get, get tired of hearing it because I think it's fantastic. But for the audience, would you share your your journey just to the, the work that you're doing now in the world and how you found your way into this modality of galactic astrology? Yes, um, gladly. So to kind of sum it up, <laughs> I, I was always curious about astrology. Well, always since my teenage years when I had access to books on astrology and I was always very self-reflective also, um, always uh, paying attention to other people's behavior and curious about what makes them certain way. So then when astrology books uh, came to my hands, it was like, oh my God, this is, these are the answers I was looking for. So um, the the understanding deepened when I became a certified quantum soul, uh, quantum healing hypnosis practitioner technique taught by Dolores Cannon. And from very early on, I was asking every client to provide their birth details if they had them available. So after my day spent with a client where they shared everything about their life experience, and then we journeyed through deep uh, regression hypnosis through multiple previous incarnations or their ancestral memories that were recalled in the altered states of consciousness. I had a really good picture about their overall experience. And then after they left, I had my dinner and then I looked at their astrological chart, just looking for some correlations and um, looking for proof or validation to everything that they've shared about their own life experience, but also the guidance that was coming through from their higher self, because mostly oftentimes people came with a question, what is my life purpose? What am I here to do? And interesting information always came through their own higher self. Like they came to answer their own questions, just going into that deeper state where the ego and the kind of um, analytical, logical side of our being goes aside and you connect to that deeper heart based intelligence so and it was so so amazing to see how how the guidance was always aligned with their astrological chart and the transits that were happening as well so i just feel you know with people that 
uh, don't understand astrology, they're still influenced by the movement of celestial bodies, but unconsciously. And those that study astrology, they can have the pleasure of witnessing it and kind of riding the wave very consciously and perhaps leveraging their understanding of uh, the potentials that they're navigating in their life experience. Mm -hmm. So over time, you know, as you see, uh, when you see a lot of data in any discipline, whether scientific or um, any discipline at all, when you have huge amount of information, you start noticing patterns and maybe some brains are wired uh, in better recognizing patterns than others. And my chart certainly speaks volumes of uh, natural ability to do that. So I started noticing repeat repeating patterns and things that started validating themselves over time. And there's this beautiful phenomenon with any uh, practitioners and people working one-on-one uh, -on -one with others is that I believe astrologically influence based on transits, we have uh, weeks or even a month where you have very same uh, energy or similar energy coming through your clients where they'll have all Taurus rising in the space of a month. So you have this wonderful opportunity to dive deeper into particular patterning or archetype, astrologically speaking, and uh, really get a deeper understanding. And it just really feels like you're taught by life itself. So it's just such a privilege to um, have the opportunity to work with individuals and also paying attention to cosmic uh, energies and influences. So I got to a point yes. where I started becoming really excited about what I was seeing. I was like, oh my goodness, this there's really something to it, not just the influence of the planets, but also stars. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, recognizing the frequency of, for example, someone that had really strong Palladian alignment in their natal chart, they were communicating in a certain style. People that had more Syrian alignment strong in their natal chart, they had very different frequency. And over time, you start noticing that, yeah, actually, there's really something to it. So I got to a point where I started sharing this information with my clients that came in particular, who were interested in, in the extraterrestrial phenomena. And the feedback was just so encouraging that I felt uh, the urge to put everything I found into a easy to follow format in term in um, uh, online courses that are you know structured in a way that is easy to follow and I've never looked back then the community that that is being attracted to this information is just most wonderful and exciting uh, type of beautiful souls that for me I feel just really privileged to to talk with others who are into this kind of stuff and just no, validating each other's experiences that oh my goodness there's really something to it it's really a phenomena mm -hmm. so Amazing. that's the gist of it thank you like I said I never I never get tired of hearing that because I just think it's um I think it's so fantastic. Uh, and like you said, being able to recognize patterns and these themes. And I certainly experienced that in my own work as well. And I was actually just talking to the guest um, that I had on last week as a QHHT practitioner in Germany. And we were talking about the same thing, about how it seemed there is a, such a, an intelligence uh, and uh, an orchestration that's going on. And it's almost like, you know, something I think about is, obviously it's clear that you were meant to um, discover what you've discovered and the connections that you've discovered and to do what you're doing now and how how amazing because I think you've brought such a um, such a breath of fresh air and such a uh, a new dimension to this topic and such a greater understanding I know for me the first time that I saw my chart on your um, on your website it was like wow, I mean, I just had this full body reaction to it. And like many people, as I'm sure you, you understand, there was just this voracious hunger to understand more about my chart. And, um, and I've gone through waves, you know, since I've just almost almost two years ago, since I first saw my chart through waves of, you know, uh, exploring externally, and then taking it internally and applying it and integrating it and so on. And um, it's just been the most amazing journey. And I really feel and something I wanted to share with you, I was saving it for our time together is, um, and I'm sure many people have experienced this as well. But I find that discovering this information that you've shared, and through the chart, um, I feel it, it, it really accelerated my um, 
evolution of or the expansion of my consciousness and not only my understanding of myself and my soul origin and my soul journey, but um, helping me to understand other people. And like I shared with you before, you know, the waves of energy that are entering the earth plane and uh, these soul types and, and, and these, these children that are deciding to join us now at this particular moment in time. So uh, just so fantastic and so excited about what you're doing. Um, and I really feel that it's, it's so such an important building block to um, this, this moment, this in time, uh, this, this advancement, this development, this expansion of consciousness that's happening. I think you're, you're contributing to that so beautifully. So thank you for your work. Um, so for anybody who's Thank new you. to That's this concept so and hasn't hear. seen their chart before and it is or is new feedback to the concept that of galactic I keep hearing astrology. over and over. Oh, oh, sorry, Julie, I didn't mean to talk over you. There was just a little a little delay there. Um, what I was saying There's is... There's a bit of a delay, so... Yes, I know. I, I, I just heard that. Um, I'll just wait for it to catch up here. Uh, okay, so what I was saying is... Um, what for anybody who's new to looking at their chart or maybe hasn't seen their chart before is new to the concept of galactic astrology in general can you tell us a little bit about um what looking at the different alignments in the chart can tell somebody perhaps about their soul's journey or um perhaps incarnations or whether you know parallel or whatever you want to call it um what can that tell us about our, our soul's journey so, well, first of all, when someone visits our website, galacticastrochart.com, and they click on the free chart uh, tab and put in their birth details, they may be quite surprised by how many different star systems they will see in their natal chart. So it gives you a snapshot of um, mathematically, geometrically uh, calculated uh, speaking way, uh, what stars and we also use what I call super cosmic points like galactic center, super galactic center and beyond at a time of your birth. And not only through conjunction, <clears throat> but also opposition, trine, sextile square. So there, these are all different aspects which talk about different relationships energetically speaking between the planets and the stars. And all these things manifest in a different way. So the, the table that you will see in front of you offers very complex, almost infinite feeling uh, story of your ancient soul history. So first of all, just looking at it all, not understanding any of it, it may feel first a little bit overwhelming, but I believe that the first experience of expansion of our consciousness that people experience at that glance is realizing that they are connected to cosmos much more than they were ever led to believe and seeing it black on white may really help them start resolving and dissolving the limited view of who they thought they are or who they came here to be and they suddenly may feel connected and start remembering beautiful soul connections and love that they shared with beings from other star systems in one way or another because through the hypnosis regression sessions, the most wonderful and really the pinnacle of me witnessing people experiencing their remembering of their soul connections to other star beings is the profound love that they feel and, and realizing that they were connected all along, just for the time being, the veil of forgetting uh, was giving them the impression that they are not connected and they're lost or far away or in a strange world that feels so alien to them. But in fact, the, the family is sending frequency of love and support the whole time, hoping for the right timing when it is okay and safe for them to start remembering and reintegrating the wisdom and skills that they acquired as a soul in other star systems and other exoplanets. <laughs> so just realizing that, that you are connected to stars in one way or another, and then just taking a kind of intuitive look, like you, you have to, like my best advice is feel the chart in your heart and start uh, kind of noticing which name on 
the whole list of different star systems there is speaking to most. Not, you know, many people would say that certain uh, star systems will kind of um, come out of the chart and they draw you in more. So then you can just start looking for information that's available online about those star systems. On my YouTube channel, Galactic Astrology, there is plenty of free content in relation to what can it mean to have certain star system in your natal chart, what are the most likely manifestation of that, whether in your personality uh, expression or uh, other way of kind of perceiving the world. So then you can see if that resonates with you or not. And then just really um, accept that you're now at the beginning of a really, really long journey. And it's okay not to know it all and understand it all. We never will because it's just, uh, it's very quantum. It yeah. it opens new door every time you uh, integrate a room, a segment <laughs> of your soul history, something else opens and reveals and it just gets bigger and bigger. But essentially that, or eventually we get to a point where we stop needing knowing and understanding all those connections and realizing that actually everything is connected and what matters the most is love and evolution yeah. and connection so i believe um that the reason why we are all here at this time and remembering all these things for many people spontaneously recalling uh past, present, future uh, lifetimes and different worlds. I believe we are here to uh, relive or remember the trauma of conflict that was occurring on so many levels in so many different worlds and bring frequency of love and higher wisdom uh, into the physical experience, into this lower uh, kind of frequency uh, expression of source and then bringing greater unity and greater connectivity between all the worlds, all timelines, all um, star systems and somehow elevate all everything together. And I believe it's a this is a byproduct or result of Earth herself going through this process of shifting her frequency into something higher. I even have goosebumps uh, as I say this, because that was something that was happening for many people in their regression hypnosis. They, they didn't come with this question at all or even wondering about this at all, but they were shown that they were at some point a soul in different star system, just mm -hmm. emanating frequency of love. They were not, uh, it, it was a higher like ethereal state of being. And they suddenly felt the call of planet Earth uh, calling out to, this, to, the, to the universe that she 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 she's calling in more light and love to support her in her cycle of ascension yes and uh, many 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 souls ushered in to do this um wonderful epic journey yeah so beautifully said and something that i have received a lot you know as i in my work i do this have the great privilege of working with um the energies of children before they have even been conceived and sometimes while they're in utero and you know one of one time this has actually happened more and more as the years have gone on and of course one of the questions just as we have the question of why am i here what am i here to do many parents are now curious about their children and what they are here to do or why are they coming here at this time and more and more over the years uh, especially in the last handful of years the children have said something along the lines of, you know, why are you here? Why are you coming here now? And the common thread or the red thread has been, well, the earth called me here. Um, or I was, you know, I was off doing my, my thing. I was um, not interested necessarily in having another incarnation. And, but then I heard the call and earth called me to her. L literally, like she said, please come help me. Um, and, and that has, you know, that has repeated again and again and again in different energies that, that I'm speaking to of why they're coming here. And of course, I'm sure there's there's other reasons, but I love what you say of how it, it, it really does come back to, to love and to unity. And I think that's really what so many of us who are here, but also the energies who are coming in are, are trying to... to um, to anchor or to accomplish or to to bring emphasis back to so 
it's a uh, I was having goosebumps as you were speaking about it. And actually just recently, I haven't shared this yet, but I wanted to share it since we're on the topic. Um, I was in meditation a few weeks ago and um, just sort of letting the meditation take me where it, where it will. And I went into this experience with um, the energy, the frequency of this planet of Earth. And um, she showed uh, herself to me as this beautiful woman with this long silver hair and this face with just that was just love like just a, a, a face that emanated love um and without even having to smile or do anything it was just this beautiful face and she showed me, herself to me with all of these beings unicorns and dragons and and fae and fairies and all of these elemental energies and, um, and animals. And, you know, I said, and they were just sort of all sitting together, cohabitating, coexisting. And, you know, I said, wow, like I was just observing it. And she said, these are all the beings that, you know, um, once were a part of this earth plane, but they, they were at some point rejected or, you know, um, have been rejected in the collective consciousness. And so they're here kind of in this inner realm in this space with me until it's time for that energy to kind of return. I just thought it was so it was so interesting. So, you know, I think I love what you're saying. Uh, and I think understanding that the earth is a, a living being is a sentient entity and energy is and she's she has a, a mission and then and an ascension process of her own and an agenda we could say and then is sort of calling these souls to to be here to assist her in that i think it's just so amazing thank you for sharing that beautiful story and i uh, it reminds me many regression sessions when where clients recalled to remembering their own existence as as fey um elementals yeah. and talking of similar experience where there was once a time on earth where they were um, on the surface and visible but then yeah. as a result of the natural cycle of earth descending mm -hmm. and different and holding space for um, human life forms playing out their games to support their souls evolution or whatever other agendas may have been uh, influencing this but always with alignment of the uh, very long uh, cycle of the heartbeat of the universe uh, yeah. that we see across all forms. So Earth herself has this and now then kind of coming back, uh, communicating through, you know, with our hearts and helping us remember and actually embrace them and call them back into our reality. So it's so wonderful to hear that you had that experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. And particularly in 2024, I'm curious your experience with this, but specifically with dragon energy um, seems to be uh, making a resurgence or a reappearance or, or just is more Absolutely. prominent in my experience. I've had so many dreams this year just in the first few months of this year of these beautiful dragon guides it curious any thoughts or, or insight around that yes absolutely we it, like it again a phenomenon that it's like a ripple effect that is happening across the globe with many many people and especially it, i well i've noticing it awakening for a couple of years already and it's um yeah and even before but in the lesser numbers and it's just you know more people remember uh, the connection to the ancient dragon frequency and how it is very present on earth but now awakening um, mm -hmm. there's been so many different ways how it is making itself known through different experience yeah. of people and certainly i believe we can then track it also with galactic astrology whether that's with planets uh, transiting activating alignments to uh, draco constellation and there are uh, different prominent big stars there that have different astrological degrees so there may be correlation there but also in connection to the super cosmic points like the galactic center super galactic center the great attractor and shapley attractor which people can find in our calculator that uh, also um, can be activated through transits and that's usually when we uh, see people experiencing group events coming together and suddenly everyone is very aware of certain um, locations and energy centers that feel like you're actually on the back of a sleeping dragon that is just mighty mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, so many people recall their own connection to dragon beings, like you, you go into meditations. And I had that experience before as well, where you just become, become massive energetically and you feel the scales and you feel the magnificence of the intelligence that feels like the purpose is holding sovereignty and maintaining balance and universal harmony. So there's just so much to it. And it's beautiful to see some people becoming very passionate about talking about this and helping others remember uh, that it's not just a myth. There is something much more archetypal and and embedded in, in the whole cosmology. So, yeah. Yes. I think as Dolores Cannon used to say, you know, these myths didn't come from nowhere. They, they're, they're based in yeah. some you know well of anything of anything so mm. and of course chinese astrology this year 2024 is their year of a wooden dragon so yes. that alone also um, is fascinating i've noticed uh, looking at charts of certain individuals um, that were prominent um, in human history how you know people that were born in a year of a dragon when we look at galactic astrology they would have um, alpha draconis uh, thuban um star conjunct one of their natal planets and it's interesting how that frequency of a dragon fighting for sovereignty fighting for um restore, restored balance and harmony it was part of their mission and they were carrying that ancient dragon wow. frequency in their soul so wow amazing yeah. well and it brings to to mind something that I, I've been speaking about a lot lately it's just one of my interests but this concept of I'll kind of weave it in a few different ways. The first being that, you know, as a as a soul, as an energy, as we're entering the the, the earth plane and when we're we're, we're born um, here, that there's so much that we're orchestrating. You know, whether whether it's the 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 year that we're being born into, the year of the dragon, or whether it's the the moon sign under a particular day that 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 is then going to show a particular alignment to the moon that's significant galactic astrology wise. Or, I was just speaking to a numerologist earlier um, today, and she was sharing about how you know, of course, the the day that we're born dictates then the life path, and so on and so forth, and. I'm always just particularly interested in that intelligence of the timing um, and how, you know, we'll really sort of either wait or push forward and push ahead in order to secure the particular alignments that our soul is really looking to come in and have an experience of. Um, and so that's something I would love to talk to you about because, of course, it's an interest of mine. Of, uh, like I shared with you before, I'm I'm really looking to study just as you were and have studying the the charts of your QHHT um, clients and seeing the alignments in the chart and then how that then. Um, connected to what they were bringing forward in session and, um, and and I'm particularly interested in these these energies entering and how what's showing up in their charts and it's still fresh it's still new it's I'm still working my way through I have about like I said 400 <laughs> charts to to it's a full-time job in and of itself which I'm sure you can relate to um, but I'd be just just curious to hear Julia any any thoughts or experiences that you've had particularly working with um, you know the energies entering the the earth plane right now or any children's charts that that um, that you've seen or anything that's particularly interesting you surrounding that topic uh first of all i just want to say I, it it makes me feel so excited to hear about the potential of the research that you are doing uh, and the passion that is fueling the time and effort it takes to do something like that and um at the same time, I also recall other uh, members of my community who feel equally strongly called to study um, their clients and using different modalities for that purpose. So there will be, I, I can foresee that there will be so much data available to us in the span of next decade that I wholeheartedly believe and hope that it will the result of that will be allowing astrology to take its rightful place in scientific field because the data will become so uh, strong, you know, showing that it is not just make-believe and 
um, you know, confirmation bias and whatnot, like the, the amount of data will be unprecedented. Like we've never had so much and we have electronic and we can share it. And it's just a completely different uh, game level as uh, ever possible uh, with astrology. So just this alone makes me ext extremely, extremely excited um, at the potential of all this. And one advice I can give to anyone who will start collecting data and uh, diving deeper into individual life stories is to have it stored um, electronically because my case was <laughs> having everything on paper. I have this pile of papers with handwritten notes and I was calculating everything manually. I, I don't know how I did not realize there is um, a professional astrological stuff. So for there were just certain things on my path that just did not occur to me. I was I was shielded from what was already out there, including astrology book on fixed stars, on like how ancient astrologers perceive stars. That just did not occur to me. It was like, the, I really feel like I was a horse with blindfolds on and I was meant to just have my own unique experience um, tuning into stars based on what was in front of me as a human form in their experience and obviously for a reason. So yeah, um, you know, having everything then electronically where you can easier um, review the the data and find patterns, perhaps with the help of a software and things like that. So um, yeah, that's one thing. And in terms of children, particularly for myself, it has not been my attraction point to, uh, or, or passion to look into that. But I know we have a handful of uh, already certified and not yet certified quantum soul guidance practitioners who are diving deep on on this topic for their own reasons based on their own life experience and they are finding fascinating uh, discoveries. I had an um, interview on my channel Galactic Astrology with a lady who is dedicating her time to <clears throat> working with parents of the um, uh, rainbow children, diamond children, crystal children, the generational and um, before that interview, I went through the kind of generational astrology and what outer planets were telling us about these generations of different children coming in. And mm -hmm. um, then she was able to validate it. Yeah, actually, that particular generation, that is the frequency. So if anyone is interested to look at uh, the video, if you search for it, it's uh, if you search for the rainbow crystal diamond uh, keywords on my channel, you'll find it there. It's quite fascinating. I was giving out the timelines and the um, outer planets uh, too. But if we look at the galactic astrology of that, if we extend the influence of the outer planets and see which um, fixed stars or, 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 or deep space objects are directly influencing uh, the influx of souls coming in, that tells us another part of the story. Like For example, in 1990s, we had a whole um, uh, span of time, large span of time where we had stellium in Capricorn and a lot of uh, and planets aligned to Lyran stars, Lyra Vega, Lyra Nebula, and uh, aspecting also the galactic center. And I had the privilege of interviewing one soul like that um, on our galactic um, ambassadors podcast <clears throat> who, who had this um, configuration and you can see the powerful powerful frequency of enthusiasm and passion to serve the collective with integrity and certainly recalling that lyre and frequency and all the history there so i would encourage anyone looking at birth, at children's natal charts to uh, have a look at the fixed stars as well the constellations the star systems there and then explore the history connected to the star system, the frequency there, and start uh, contemplating how that can impact the Earth when these children become activated, when they come into uh, certain age. We'll look at the transits. I'm sure there is just always, there is such epic divine orchestration when we look at astrology, when you can witness it, is is just phenomenal and mind-blowing, and I just... Um, I'm in really awe <laughs> and I can only bow to the supreme intelligence that we are witnessing here. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it feels like and just in terms of the kind of generations that are coming in now, it, it feels to me like we first had a big wave uh, with the hippies movement of um, souls that were bringing anchoring a lot of the kind of galactic frequencies 
coming with the memory, strong memory of unconditional love, unity, um, and they wanted to anchor that on earth, but it was extremely difficult because the human DNA, our physical bodies were so conditioned by, by trauma, by so many generations, centuries of, of abuse and control and manipulation. <clears throat> so the easiest way for them to navigate that was to numb the extreme contrast, whether to alcohol or drugs, uh, addictions and all that. Then their children uh, were headed, my generation, our role is to, to um, expand our consciousness by absorbing like sponge all the available information on all kinds of healing modalities and deep psychology and all these things to start healing uh, our human uh, lineage as much as possible. And then our generation, the people born in 1980s, 70s, we bring another generation of children who were diagnosed, unfortunately, with ADD, ADHD, not fitting in because their role, their purpose is to break the system that is not working, that is totally yeah. working against what is natural for us and what is natural for, for Earth. So they are rebelling. Um, that frequency is very strong with them. And uh, so, so sorry for jumping back, the, my generation, the 80s, uh, 1980s born, 1970s born, that was the strong indigo frequency, um, really coming in as uh, carrying wisdom and um, ability to heal ourselves and offering healing support to, to others. The indigo parents can bring in the diamond frequency in the children that are not meant to fit in. And they are very triggering to their environment because diamond frequency is very like, um, you know, you see yourself very clearly in contrast to that pure uh, purity of diamond uh, soul. And then after them, we have these diamond children that just come with just pure joy, really bringing much, much lighter frequency in to come and play. And through playful creativity, when they come of age, they'll create most amazing, uh, innovative ways to bring like the paradise feeling back to how we are supposed to live in connection with nature in a playful way, kind of lightening up uh, quite a bit rather than us taking it so seriously and analyzing everything. And then after this rainbow generation, what we are seeing now, like this year, dragon babies being born, I, I believe when they uh, come of age, they will be really powerful leaders, uh, able to to build um, this whole new world uh, with with systems that are just not nothing we can imagine yet. So each generation has their purpose, and it's I feel it's important for for us to realize that we we are not here to wait for experiencing all that amazingness here and now of the new earth, but really thinking about how what we do affects the generations ahead of us. We really are here for the earth uh, as well as our own evolution. But the main purpose is just kind of playing our part and supporting the overall evolution. Um, would you like to add anything to all that? Oh, yeah, no, it's just I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving listening to you, like, listen to you all day. Um, completely agree. And I, that's something that I was interested in, in speaking with you about just your, um, you know, in current time, 2024, I think it's uh, I, some of the language that I use is, is slightly different, but I think it all is reroutes back to the same thing, which is that, and I agree with you about these, these dragon babies, these 2024 babies being born right now, they're certainly carrying an energy that I kind of call an activator energy where um, they're, oh, they're awesome. very interesting. Mm. Yeah. They're very interested in in um, uh, and and I, what I'm noticing with these children is they are just so des not desperate but so urgent. There's this urgency to get going, and they kind of almost want to bypass their their childhood. Where you know I have these mothers messaging me like, "My baby's already trying to do X Y Z, and they were just born you know uh, two months ago, and they sh they're bypassing all their milestones and." I've never had a child like this. And um, wow. my previous children were, were not doing this in the same way. So I just think it's, it's very, they're kind of almost shocking, you know, and then these parents will be like, I took the, I was worried. And so I took my child to the doctor. The doctor has never seen anything like this before. The pediatrician is, is, is puzzled because they don't know what's going on. And so I, I and I, I, I was seeing this in 2023 too, but it's certainly just in, 
from what I've been able to observe in the first five months anyways, it definitely seems that there is this, um, these kind of activator energies coming into these dragon energies coming in who um, seem very eager to get going and very eager to, to begin their, their, um, their mission. That's fascinating. So, so good to hear that. <clears throat> I just want to hand in hand with that. I want to say that there are many um, souls in our generation uh, and before and somewhat younger than uh, we are who have a strong soul memory of being able to accomplish so much, whether in other worlds or in higher forms. And it is extremely frustrating to be in a limited human body experience, limited human brain, and not being able and, and not being able to accomplish all that or not doing things perfectly. And most of all, not being able to manage the emotional uh, body system. Uh, you know, it's like nothing many souls experience ever before. So it's extremely frustrating. So I always like to remind uh, people that there is a difference between this human body and whatever form you had before. So just um, allow the frequency of grace and love and compassion to your body and this human experience to bring more patience and grace to how you navigate, knowing that, you know, it's just you're learning each time and next time you can do a little bit better and a little bit better and there's divine timing for everything. So yeah, much love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that you brought that up because for a few reasons, I certainly felt that when I was a child, I remember feeling so frustrated that I wasn't able to, I remember having a concept that I wanted to communicate. And I was trying to communicate this concept through my mind. I remember saying to my mom, I'm sending it to you in my mind. Can't you hear me? And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so I was trying to put this concept together with words and I couldn't get it the way that I, I couldn't get it out the way that I wanted to get it out. And I just remember feeling so frustrated. And then also, just like you said, very limited by the human form. I remember wanting to do all these things on my own when I was a child and my parents were like well you can't do that yet because you're just a kid you, you're not you're not allowed to do that yet and I remember being like why I, I that's but I, I need to I want to you know so I certainly relate to that myself and something else I, I think I love that you brought up kind of the emotional system as well and that a lot of these souls coming into these bodies are perhaps working with that for the first time I'm certainly encountering that where they're interfacing with the human form for the very first time. That's their first time inhabiting a human form in, 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 in that way. And they're learning it, you know, they're learning like how the emotional system works and how to express and communication. And um, it's, it's just very interesting to watch them kind of, um, and, and hopefully, you know, I, I really feel passionate about supporting them into figuring that out so that they can then have the experience that they were looking to have here. Beautiful, yes. And I just want to highlight that not all are the first timers in, in yeah. human body yeah. here on Earth. You would notice some children and the galactic astrology can reveal uh, this as well, kind of validate. You will notice some young ones who are just very, um, E, very uh, natural at navigating the emotional body. They're, they're, they have really high emotional intelligence yes. and witness and, um, and cop on and, and common sense. And there is, you, you can really sense the previous incarnations of being someone who was in charge and, and used to having it all <laughs> and then working with those uh, yeah. little ones. Yeah. It's also uh, <laughs> interesting to see. Um, I recall someone who actually had uh, a very strong memory of uh, a little boy who had a very strong memory of being um, royalty before, who was commanding everyone to to support all his needs. And um, in that particular incarnation, it was in a quite rough way and uh, not very uh, compassionate towards how his words and actions were affecting others. So it was really coming through strongly in his early childhood as well as and it was um, very helpful for parents to understand where that uh, characteristic was coming from they were able to much better than able to navigate in a communication style with him helping him to explain the importance of actually learning the importance of interpersonal relationships and uh, becoming a better leader uh, 
yeah. you know, and there was a strong Aries Libra um, mm -hmm. correlation in his uh, lunar notes and other planets like Mars and uh, Saturn that kind of just validated that story. Uh, so it's just fascinating to see how we, I believe, you know, if, if it becomes, once it becomes common understanding that the soul evolves over many incarnations, uh, things will make so much more sense. At least they do to me once. Yeah. Uh, that is obvious. You know? Yes. Should I think we... it's what's interesting about that is that I was just speaking about this, this the other day is I think that that is um, really seeming to, it's been in progress, but it seems that that concept is really pushing itself into the mainstream and it's starting to really pick up mainstream attention, which is very exciting. Um, the University of Virginia here in North America is studying it and there's various um, documentary docuseries shows and I was just reading an article the other day in the Washington Post around children and the soul and reincarnation and so it, it is it does seem to be gaining um, uh, more mainstream attention and uh, like you said it's become it seems to be on its way to becoming an accepted concept which is very mm. exciting many children especially born in the uh, after year 2000 so many of them were spontaneously recalling their previous incarnation and were talking about it and in great detail so again just helping uh, more uh, brains in the human collective realize that actually there really is something to it and you cannot make it up because they they the, they were able to validate it by going and checking the facts that the child was yes. recalling so meant yes. to be Absolutely. And, and just to echo that, because um, I talk to a lot of parents and by proxy, I have them sharing the past life memories and the, the soul recall that their children are having. And it's absolutely stunning the detail that they're able to retain full names, places, birth dates, death dates. Um, I have a, uh, my niece the other day, she was talking to me about how she wrote a book a long time ago about the solar system and about how people used to think that the sun revolved around the earth, but actually I discovered that the earth revolved around the sun and that it wasn't written in English and it had a yellow cover. And she's explaining all this about this book that she wrote about this which she's only four. She, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't know any of this. She doesn't know that there was the concept of the solar wow. system and how it worked. And then it, she made this discovery. I mean, amazing. And the, like the, the level of detail that they're able to retain and then communicate is just so exciting. Such a, you know, what a time to be alive. <laughs> yeah, truly, truly. Well, I would love to, to transition, Julia. I, I, I'm very curious to hear you have been t working tirelessly. I see you uh, sharing so much content and um, on your YouTube channel and your podcast and your, your training and supporting all of these wonderful practitioners. Um, I've taken one of your courses. I took your, your 101 course, which I just loved and I still go back to. And, um, and so that has been a focus of your work. I'm curious in present day, um, what are you feeling most excited about? What's drawing your attention? What's inspiring you? Do you have any particular hyperfixations in your in your work now? Um, what is kind of calling your attention at present time? Studying charts of extraordinary minds, extraordinary people, and mm. uh, looking for patterns there. And I'm glad I, you know, when I have an opportunity to put together a presentation for, um, let's say, astrologers community, um, where I can kind of put things together and 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 share them. There'll be one um, published by the end of June. Uh, people will Great. be able to see it on my channel. Uh, once it's published within the astrologers community so definitely that and i would i just look forward to having the time the glimpses of time where i can look for um charts of these extraordinary or extraordinary people and seeing how the super cosmic points and certain star systems including the royal stars aldebaran mm -hmm. antares Fomalhaut, and regulus how the combination of certain um, cosmic alignments plays a role in an extraordinary mind to ah. 
to become activated and creative and impact the society based on where is it sitting in their need, which houses, which life areas are activated by these. So it's all there. Like, it's so, so amazing. So that's what I'm into right now. Oh, that makes me very excited. I can't wait to hear more about that. Anyone in particular that you're you're studying that you'd feel comfortable sharing or, or keeping so a secret? So in that presentation that people can yeah. look forward to now, it, I will, I look at the uh, natal chart of um, uh, Maya Angelou, mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King, Sadhguru, mm -hmm. um, Robert Edward Grant, um, Wow. Uh, the scientists and um, world's best known innovators, um, Nikola Tesla, a gentleman who uh, discovered the car and mass production of automobile, uh, people like wow. that. So, um, and there's more. <laughs> wow, can't yeah. wait. And, and what I'm hearing you say is that there seems to be one of the patterns is that there's a prominence of the four royal stars or the super cosmic points some of them in combination with super cosmic points. So I coined this term recently, galactic astrology harmonics, like mm -hmm. starting to notice that it's not just focusing on what is a star telling me about me, but what about the combination of multiple um, placements? Because yeah, when you have the combination of these things, usually there is like a lot more energy frequency coming through the soul, whereas incarnations that don't necessarily have these strong prominent placements and i don't mean to uh, create a hierarchy of what's better what's worse because there are m you know majority of lives are not meant to be out in the public eye and creating waves um in a very particular um, path focus majority of people are really needed to just anchor the frequency of love or peace or working through generational trauma and things like that. Um, and I've seen it a lot coming through the QHHT sessions where people were asking, what's my purpose? What's my path in this incarnation? They were told just be an anchor of love or be an anchor of peace, be an anchor of this and that. Just be the, uh, you're like a crystal that mm -hmm. is used by cosmic energies at certain times and you're bringing the energy into the earth. So it's okay that you're an introvert. It's okay if you feel isolated, you're actually doing an amazing work and we thank you so much. So yeah, um, amazing. yeah. Amazing. Sorry, there was just a delay. I was waiting for it to catch up. Um, I love that because I think it's it's a reminder that we are all here to play a role. And like you said, for some people that is um, maybe more public and they're pushing into the um, into the, the mainstream and they're very active in that way. And for other people, their role is, like you said, to to be an anchor, which um, what a beautiful thing. And I think that's really felt, you know, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of those people who are here to do just that. and what I find is that those people just have the most gorgeous energy that, that, you know, they're really exuding that if they're in their kind of um, awareness of the fact that they're doing it, even if they're not, but if they are, I think it's all the more powerful. Um, and it's just so wonderful to be around those people, especially if they're in full acceptance of the fact that that is their, their, you know, one of their roles in, in one way or another. So anyway, I'm very excited to hear about, about, about the that research that you're doing and, and looking forward to um, to to watching those videos. Julia, one of the questions that someone in my community had for you, I was I shared that I was having you on the podcast today, and somebody was asking me about death charts. Of course, we know birth charts, uh, and and we we can get that information at the moment of birth, um, but that there's also information to be gleaned from a death chart. And a while ago on your YouTube channel, you um, broke down the the death chart of Dolores Cannon, which was a fascinating video. And as I recall, she had quite a bit of Arturus. Um, uh, energies, both, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, in her birth chart, but also in her death chart. Anything that you can share just around the significance or prominence of looking at the death chart in addition to the birth chart? Yes, <clears throat> thank you for bringing that up. And actually, since releasing of that video, I had many people e emailing me or messaging me saying that they took time to look at birth charts of their relatives or friends and their natal charts, and they 
uh, indeed found a correlation that there are repeating alignments, that there is a pattern and usually through opposing um, alignments, like it's like you enter in one way and um, exit another, but in connection to the same star system. So it's such a beautiful validation for the galactic connection. The ones that matter, they'll be in both charts, you know. Um, so there's definitely something to it. So I would just say uh, when people do that, to look at, look for uh, commonalities and it doesn't have to be through the same planet for example mercury conjunct Arcturus and then on the death chart it has to also be mercury conjunct Arcturus not at all it can come through um, variation of of different um, planets but as I said those that matter will be present in both charts mm. fantastic Yes. And another thing, I suppose, for your audience and based on the topic that you're most interested in, I would like to invite your audience to also explore the video shared on my channel not so long ago on galactic astrology of the ancestral lineage. So when you look at the char chart of your children, yourself, your partner, both your parents, uh, grandparents and so on as far back as you can go and again the galactic alignments that really matter they will be present across every single generation and um, we were able to track um, as many as seven uh, generations of a star system that was very prominent like true conjunctions in every single generation um, so just these, even outside of galactic astrology, if you exclude the stars, you will notice different patterning. But when you bring stars in, there is something really um, special being revealed because it's, isn't it fascinating that you have seven generation consecutively where a star that is aligned to particular degree out of 360 degree circle that is present, meaning that seven generations in a row, people were born at a time where a planet was sitting exactly on that uh, degree. And then that frequency is coming through the consciousness of that individual very strongly. And the person recalls uh, connections with that star system. There is, um, you know, the, the bloodline and the frequency that comes through uh, the, you know, oh, it's just such an amazing, amazing wow. topic. Amazing. I've been able to, I watched that video. It was fantastic. And um, from the information that I have, which is my mother's information through my maternal line, my mother and my grandmother, I haven't figured out how to go as far back as my great grandmother yet, but I'm working on it. Um, and the, the prominence was uh, Pleiades in, in my chart, my mother's chart my grandmother's chart. We'll see if I can go back further. Um, but when I saw that, for whatever reason, it didn't occur to me to kind of look and compare and to see those patterns. But it was always something that I resonated with and related to. But to then see it in the chart of my mother and my maternal grandmother, I was like, ah. So mm. I love that. Did you have a chance to watch that video uh, that I, I just mentioned? on the episode? Yes. Because the Pleiades was there also through my maternal lineage. Yes. And then if you yeah. if you start to exploring the aspects, whether they are challenging aspects or um, um, supportive, enhancing or easy aspects, that also yes. can reveal a lot of information and how oftentimes we, we take on unresolved mm -hmm. um, emotional trauma or or tension from if our parents or grandparents were not able to resolve it in their own life, you will notice it astrologically placed in the children's chart. And maybe yes. the firstborn still has that frequency, but then the secondborn already doesn't because the firstborn is able to transmute it. So it's just resolve so it. amazing. So I'm blowing. Fascinating. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. And that it makes sense because actually then I'm for, born first and my brother, and when I went to look at his chart, he's, um, like I said, there was nothing, there was, there was no link, there was oh, no wow. connection. So mm -hmm. anyway, it's, it's a whole, yeah. and don't you find some, something that I think about a lot is, um, uh, I just wish I had all day to, to research all these things and to yeah. go dive deep and explore and unpack, um, um, my own, just even my own chart and all of the, the connecting pieces of it. But then, you know, I'm, I'm looking at all other people's charts and it's just all so exciting. There's so much, um, it's one of those things where sleeping feels cumbersome because you wish you had those extra eight hours at night to, uh, to research and study. Yes, welcome to my life. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, another question I had come through for you, Julia, in my community, and something I've wondered myself, any plans in the future at any point to write a book and to compile your, your knowledge into a written form? Yes, absolutely. But I believe that is a few years yeah. ahead or a few years yeah. down the line. Yeah. So looking at my own transit, I can kind of see where I will have the space and time created where universe will beautiful, where it will just happen. <clears throat> you know, there's so yeah. much, uh, I have actually multiple courses outlined uh, <laughs> that are yet to be published, but it's just like skeleton information that comes in a spurt of moment where I just see the whole course and it's all there, but I physically like my biggest issue in life is lack of time. Yeah. So I'm just at peace and complete surrender that, you know, it's okay. Um, I, I don't have to, I, I release the frustration of, of the lack of time and just yes. going with the flow, attending to what needs to be done. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Hopefully that'll, that'll come Amazing. to fruition. Beautiful, beautiful. And um, I, I published my first book last year in 2023. And um, I always knew I would write a book. I just didn't know when. And at the end of 2021, um, on New Year's Eve, actually December 31st, 2021, I was in my New Year's Eve meditation, which is usually hours upon hours. And um, I got the from my team, they said, it's time and you'll begin writing in March 2022. Um, and I began writing on March 31st, almost three months to the day, March 31st, 2022, and just looking at the transits. And then it was, it was very supportive. This, that's what that time was carved out for. And I was writing for almost, ele almost a year, exactly 11 months, this book. And, um, it really does the book. I find it so fascinating, but it really does the timing of when you're supposed to write it and when it's supposed to make its way forward. Um, it really does find you. It really does find you. So we'll look forward to that in the future. Can't wait to, to read it when it when it decides to make its way here uh, physically. Thank you. And thank you for validating by sharing your own story. Yeah, it absolutely uh, needs to feel like that. <clears throat> and that's the beauty of understanding astrology that you that you can really leverage the supportive energies of the universe and be more at peace and in surrender when you, you understand based on astrology that actually you have to tend to other things first like i uh, am experiencing that right now that where there's so many responsibilities <laughs> that i need to tend to and yes. uh that it's okay that it's that, yeah you know time there's divine timing for everything so yeah completely completely thank you julia it's been such a, a pleasure to to be here with you just as we prepare to close here would love to hear um just a, a closing message that you have something for humanity at this point, this current space time location that we are in, um, anything you want to share just as a message to either the people who are listening now at this point in 2024 or into the future that, uh, that feels relevant, uh, that is supportive on the journey that we're all on here. Sure, thank you for the opportunity. 100% taking good care of the body. I would be would be my absolute highest priority message, taking good care of the body and taking time yeah. to create those moments every day, multiple times a day when you are quiet within your own with your own being and being outside in nature. Like it has to become a habit because the lifestyle and the the trend that we are being trained into accepting as normal is completely against that. So just taking yeah. good care of the body and becoming really conscious of how much is created in our society that works against our well-being and re raising our frequencies. So I would yes. say big priority on the body, body's yes. well-being, supporting it as much as possible, because once that is in order, then everything else will happen so much more with ease and the inspirations that are coming through uh, and the communication of your galactic family or your ancestors or your own uh, divine intelligence can come through so much clearer and louder when the body is in alignment and in harmonious frequency with mother earth when yeah. you do that then you work synchronistic synchronistically with divine order of things on earth. So that's my highlight. Mm -hmm. 
I love it. Beautiful and very timely message for, for myself mm -hmm. as well. And something I think about often is, you know, I know for myself, I'm sure you can relate to this as well, is that, you know, we have this work that we feel inspired to do and much of it, it translates into the online world, which is amazing because we're able to connect with people from all over the world and um, to hear stories and, um, yeah, just really make these connections from people that we otherwise might not have been able to had we not have these amazing technologies that we have access to. And the juxtaposition of being a very sensitive <laughs> um, beings with, you know, this this very intricate um, transition that's happening within the, the crystalline structure and the physical body and so on. And that really what the body needs in those moments is just to be outside <laughs> in the sun and to not have any technology around or any input. And I find just balancing that often so delicate and so interesting. And so it's my mission and my goal for the, the summer to spend as much time uh, away from the you know, this as much as I love the connection of it and just to, to be um, with my body and to be outside and be in nature. And uh, so I love that you said that. I think it's a beautiful message and such an important reminder. It's something that I think can very easily get lost. Absolutely. If I may, I would like to um, invite the audience also, especially if, if anyone watching is going through difficult time or confusing time uh, and no, remembering that it's not always like that is just suddenly it feels like everything is difficult <laughs> or yeah. just there is this not knowing of what to do next or what, where to focus um, you know booking a galactic astrology soul reading consultation may be a wonderful way to find clarity and feeling seen and heard and validated and guided to reconnect with the inner resources that may be dormant and waiting and just understanding that it's a cycle there is a timing to there is a, you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel of that particular period and it may be just so reassuring to know that you know this is these are actually their cosmic energies working here with me pushing me to transform certain belief system and change and then there's something that you know rewards can come if i'm willing to uh, evolve so if people go to my website, galacticastrology.com and click on practitioners, there is over 50 practitioners that uh, studied with me and continue to study with me and are, who are very passionate at really diving deep into understanding all these things. And uh, there are over 20 languages also available for this Amazing. modality now. So I'm just very excited about that. And for any viewers who feel uh, uh, really aligned with this way of thinking and perceiving and even excited about taking endless hours of studying a chart of not just themselves but their family and friends and so on then perhaps perhaps considering the galactic astrology courses um, that can be found on my website we would love to have you you know it's just so good to to spend time with like-minded people and like the community just keeps me excited and focused on just let's keep going and as a collective really evolving astrology to just amazing next levels amazing yes thank you julia i was going to ask you how everybody could find you and you covered it there i love your youtube channel and um i find myself always watching the videos on there that you share and and your instagram and of course your courses i highly recommend um your courses i took your one-on-one course and it's my intention it's my prayer to do your quantum soul um guidance practitioner course one day so you will well, you'll likely see me there um thank you for your time julia and uh and and sharing your your perspectives and your wisdom deeply deeply grateful to to have had this conversation with you today i enjoyed it so much and i think it's just so important especially during these times to um have conversations with with people who are doing groundbreaking work in the world which i deeply feel that that you are um and and like i said i think you're contributing so much to um the continued uh, evolution and expansion of consciousness and um you're doing so much to support the earth and, and her frequency so just really seeing you in that and uh, and again thank you for your time thank you emily it was such a pleasure i feel the resonance with your being too so thank you so much for your light and your love thank you much love thank to you. everyone yeah beautiful all right